Grade 7 Math, number 2.3, Order of Operations with Integers. We use the order of operations with positive and negative integers just as we always have with numbers since fifth grade. Remember, parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. It spells P-E-M-D-A-S going down, PEMDAS. We solve equations and expressions in this order. And we can use please excuse my dear Aunt Sally to help us remember it, like people have for decades. I don't know what Aunt Sally did, but it's been decades and she still hasn't been excused, has she? All right, so if you remember from our previous videos, when we have multiplication and division problems and there's like signs, then it's going to be a positive answer. And in multiplication and division, if they have unlike signs, it's going to be a negative answer. Remember that? Okay. All right, so here's our first one. We have 4 times negative 30 minus 215. Now, according to the order of operations, we have to multiply first, all right? So 4 times negative 30, we take the absolute value. That's how far it is from the, number, from the 0 on a number line. And 30 times 4 is 120. Because that's a positive and that's a negative, we have a negative 120, see? Now we need to take away this 215. Well, we have negative 120 minus 215. And when we're subtracting negative integers, we add the opposite, remember? So this negative 120, this becomes a positive because we're going to add the opposite, right? And that becomes a negative. So now it becomes negative 120 plus a negative 215. Now because we're adding like signs, we just add them and we get 335. So this is 335 right here. And because they take the sign of the add-ins, they're both negative, it's going to be a negative 335, see? All right, let's try this one. Let's see which has the greater value, this one or this one. So we're going to do a comparison of expressions, okay? We've got negative 16 divided by 4. The absolute value is the value of the integer without its sign. So how far away it is from 0. So we just do 16 divided by 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Then we look at the signs to find out which sign to put in front of it. That's a negative and that's a positive, and because they're unlike, it's going to be a negative 4. Now we need to add this negative 2. Now we're just adding like signs. So 4 plus 2 is 6. We take the sign of the add-ins, it's a negative. All right, so we have a negative 6 for that one. Let's see what this one is. Negative 28 divided by 7. Do you know your 7 times table? 28 divided by 7 is 4. And because this is a negative and that's a positive, it's going to be a negative 4 because they're unlike. Now we need to add this negative 3. Because they both have a negative sign in front of them, we just add them. 4 plus 3 is 7. We take the sign that the add-ins are using. They're both negative, so it's a negative 7. Now, which one's bigger, negative 6 or negative 7? Actually, this one is bigger. It's closer to 0. Would you rather owe somebody $6 or $7? Yeah, see? So the 6 is a larger value because it's not so much in debt, see? It's not so far down on the number line, all right? So smaller negative numbers are actually bigger, all right? Now, let's take a look at this. We have negative 96 divided by 3 plus a negative 20. So we're going to do the division first. And we do 96 divided by 3, and 3 goes into the 9 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. We do our subtraction. It's the 6's turn to come down. It goes into there 2 times. 3 times 2 is 6. Do our subtraction and get 0. So we get a 32. And because this is a negative, and that's a positive, and they're different and unlike, it's a negative. Now we need to add this negative 20. Now we have, we're adding a negative and a negative. So we just add them together. 32 and 20 more is 32, 42, 52. So it's going to be 52. And we take the sign of the add-ins, and they're both negative. So it's a negative 52. OK? You see how we got that? All right. When parentheses are back-to-back -back like this, that means to multiply. So we're going to multiply this negative 4 by the 6. We do the absolute values, how far away they are from 0 without the sign temporarily. 4 times 6 is 24. 
Now we pay attention to the signs to get the sign to put in front of it. We have a negative and a positive. And unlike signs means negative, okay? So it's a negative 24. Now we're gonna add the six. Do you remember the rules for adding a negative and a positive? When the signs are different, we find the difference. So the difference between 24 and six 24 minus 6 is 18, so it's going to be an 18, and because the signs are different, it's going to be a negative, okay? Now we have a negative 3 times a negative 5. We multiply their absolute values, just the 3 and just the 5, we get a 15. They have the same sign, don't they? And when the signs are the same, it's a positive, right? So we know this is a plus 15 right here, and we're going to take away 5. And because these are both positive right here, I'm sorry about the camera, because these are both positive, we're just going to subtract. We don't have any negatives here. This is the, the takeaway, the subtraction sign, so they're both positive, so it comes out as a 10. See? All right, let's take a look at this one. Hopefully I'll hold my camera straight. We've got a negative 21 divided by a negative 3. Remember, fractions are just little mini division problems. So this is 21 divided by 3. Do you remember your 3 times table? 3 times 7. And because they're both negatives, they're like signs, it's going to be a positive 7. So now we have a positive 7 minus a negative 4. Do you remember what happens when we subtract negative integers? We add the opposite, don't we? So that's going to turn into a plus sign. That's going to turn into the opposite of a negative, and it's going to be a plus. So now we just have 7 plus 4. And 7 plus 4 is 11, isn't it? We added, so that became a plus, the opposite. Opposite of negative 4 is positive 4. So we got 7 plus 4. All right. It says simplify each expression. We've got negative 10 divided by 5 plus 2. Order of operations says to do this first. We do their absolute values. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Their signs are unlike. They're different, negative and positive. So it's going to make a negative. And now it says to add 2. Negative 2 plus 2. Do you know what that equals? Do you remember? When we have a negative 6 and a positive 6, they're opposites and they make a zero pair? All right, so this makes a zero pair, doesn't it? So this equals zero. Let's try this one. 48 divided by negative six minus five. Do you remember your six times table? We're gonna do the absolute value, 48 divided by six. 48 divided by six is eight. This is a positive 48 and a negative six, so it's gonna be unlike signs, so it's a negative eight. And now we need to take away the five. Uh-oh, we're subtracting negative integers, so you know what we need to do? That turns into a plus, and that turns into a minus. So we get a negative 8 plus a negative 5. And now, because the signs are the same, we just add them. It equals 13. And we take the sign of the add-ins that they're sharing. They're both negative, so it's a negative 13, isn't it? All right, this one says which expression is equal to 0. We've got all these fractions as division problems, plus or minus a 4. So let's see which one equals 0. Negative 24 divided by 6. Well, 24 divided by 6 is 4. And because this is a negative and that's a positive, that's going to make that a negative. Negative 4 minus 4. Well, we're subtracting negative integers, so you know what we need to do. Let me move him back a little bit. We have a negative 4 minus 4. So we have to add the opposite. So that's going to become a plus, and that positive 4 is going to become a negative 4. So now we have negative 4 plus negative 4. Well, 4 and 4 is 8. We take the sign of the add-ins. It's a negative, and that one's a negative 8. So it doesn't equal 0, does it? So that one's gone. That's out of the running. Now we have negative 4, 24, divided by negative 6. We know it's 4, because 24 divided by 6 is 4. It's got like signs, so it's a positive 4. Now we're going to add 4. Hmm, 4 plus 4 equals 8, doesn't it? So that one's not 0 either, is it? All right. 
These are all positive numbers. So do you think it's going to equal 0? I doubt it. 24 divided by 6 is 4, plus this 4. It's going to equal 8, just like the other ones. So it's got to be this one out of default, but let's do it anyway. 24, negative 24 divided by negative 6. We do the absolute values, 24 divided by 6, we get the 4. They have the same sign, so it's positive, and now we're going to subtract 4. 4 take away 4 equals 0, and that's the 1 that equaled 0. So see how, depending on where the negative or positive numbers were, how it changed from a negative 8 to a positive 8, positive 8 to a 0? Hmm, okay. One last thing to show you quickly. When an integer is alone in parentheses, it doesn't count as parentheses for the order of operations. For the order of operations, we simplify the operations inside the parentheses first. That's what they mean by doing the parentheses first. So if you see this, 5 plus negative 3 plus 4, that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about when there's actually an operation that needs to be done, like multipl multiplication, addition, subtraction, division, inside of the parentheses. That is what you do first. Then you do the addition and subtraction. See? So if you just see it by itself, it doesn't mean that that has to be done first, okay? Unless, of course, you see it like this, where it's got multiplication because it's in parentheses. Then it gets done first before subtraction, okay? So I hope this helped. I'm sorry the video was so long, but there was so much to show you. And I hope this is going to help you in this unit, and I hope it's going to help you with adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, and with the order of operations. I'll see you next video. Keep plugging. You're going to do this. Bye.